Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. We would really appreciate if you could recommend us to your friends and family as well as share information on social media. My name is Artem and here is the news. For 233 days, Ukraine defends itself against the forces of the Russian invasion. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky gave an interview to the German media ZDF, reports in VUA. In this interview, Zelensky expressed belief that there ought to be no negotiations with Russian President Vladimir Putin because he is not entirely reasonable and is moreover a terrorist at his core. The president said that he is prepared to talk to those who want peace. Putin, by contrast, talks about negotiations while his forces launch hundreds of missiles on Ukraine and its critical energy infrastructure. Zelensky believes that European leaders must also make it clear to the Russian Federation that they will not negotiate with Putin. The president thinks that Russia might attack Ukraine's gas transportation system and demand that European countries launch Nord Stream 2 that is currently not working due to sanctions. Head of the president's office, Andriy Yermak, demanded from the International Committee of the Red Cross to send a mission to the colony in Olenivka in the occupied territory of Donetsk region, where Ukrainian prisoners of war are held no later than in three days, reports Unian. He stressed that such a mission should take place even if the Red Cross does not receive permission from Russia. In that case, the mission will be on the front line until Russia issues these permits. Yermak said that Ukraine's representatives are ready to join the mission, including MPs. Otherwise, according to Yermak, Ukraine, together with its partners, will find a way to form an expert group and find people who will be willing to carry out the mission that the Red Cross was designed to carry out. In July, in Olenivka, over 50 Ukrainian prisoners of war were killed in an explosion. The Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe has adopted a resolution calling the Russian Federation a terrorist regime, reports European Pravda. The resolution states that Russian aggression must be condemned as a crime, as a violation of international law and as a major threat to international peace and security. It is also calls for the provision of air defense systems for Ukraine. The Parliamentary Assembly became the first international organization to designate Russia a terrorist state. The head of EU diplomacy, Josep Borrell, said that the West's response to a potential nuclear attack on Ukraine will not be nuclear, but it will be very powerful from a military point of view, reports European Pravda. Borrell said that the response will be so powerful that the Russian army will be completely destroyed. Earlier, French President Emmanuel Macron said that Paris will not use nuclear weapons against Russia if it launches a nuclear attack on Ukraine. He pointed out that such a nuclear attack would not question fundamental interests of the French nation and that's the only reason to consider using nuclear weapons. In his evening video address, President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky informed that the Bakhmut direction in Donbass remains one of the toughest on the front. According to him, now Russia is sending thousands of its mobilized men to the front, they have no significant military training. The Russian command expects that the mobilized will be able to survive in the war for at least a few weeks, then they will die, and then new ones will be sent to the front. Zelensky stressed that even such use by Russian generals of their people as cannon fodder makes it possible to create additional pressure on Ukrainian defenders. He expressed gratitude to all Ukrainian warriors who endure it and Ukraine's partners who understand that in such conditions Ukraine needs an increase in defense assistance. Explosions ran out yesterday in the Russian city of Belgorod, located to the northeast of Ukraine, not far from the Russian-Ukrainian border, reports Ukrainska Pravda. According to the local governor, Vyacheslav Gladko, the ammunition depot was blown up. He claimed that this was a result of an attack by the Ukrainian armed forces. According to the governor, there were no casualties or fatalities. Media also informed about a fire at a sugar factory in the region. Earlier, one of the Russian missiles launched against the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv malfunctioned and exploded, its pieces hitting a multi-apartment building in Belgorod. The Ukrainian Air Force informed about the crash of one of Ukrainian Su-24M planes in the territory of Poltava region. One pilot was killed, reports Channel 24. The bomber supported the offensive of the Ukrainian forces and was hit by a missile after a combat mission. The crew ejected, but one of the pilots did not survive. Earlier, Suspilne reported about the crash of two Ukrainian planes in the territory of the region in the past two days. 
20 people were released from Russian captivity as part of the prisoner exchange, reports Ukrainska Pravda. Among them are 14 servicemen of the armed forces, four territorial defense fighters, one National Guard officer and one naval serviceman. Ukraine also managed to return 96 Ukrainian children from Russia and occupied territories. The UK announced the transfer of Amram missiles to Ukraine in the coming weeks, reports Interfax Ukraine. These missiles can be used with the NASAMS air defense systems promised earlier by the US. Also, according to the British Defense Secretary Ben Wallace, the assistance package will include missiles to the air defense systems previously provided by the UK, Stormer and Star Streaks, hundreds of additional drones to support information gathering and logistics capabilities, as well as 18 artillery systems. In addition, the UK will allocate £10 million for a comprehensive package of NATO assistance to Ukraine, which involves the purchase of non-lethal aid to the Ukrainian army on the eve of winter, namely winter clothing, shelters, generators, fuel trucks and ambulances. At the same time, Spain plans to provide Ukraine with four launchers of the Hawk air defense system, reports European Pravda. Portugal will provide Ukraine with six Ka transport helicopters, reports Militarny. The helicopters were deprived of operating licenses due to the introduction of sanctions against Russia. Prime Minister Denis Shmigal informed that Ukraine received 1.3 billion US dollars in additional emergency financing from the International Monetary Fund, reports the SNUA. According to him, the funds will be used to finance priority needs, strengthening defense capabilities, paying pensions, social programs and supporting the economy. According to the CNN, SpaceX has informed the Pentagon that it can no longer cover the cost of Starlink satellite communication services in Ukraine, reports Espresso TV. In a letter to the Pentagon, Elon Musk's company asked the government to take over the financing of Ukraine's governmental and military use of the Starlink system, which will cost more than 120 million US dollars by the end of the year and may cost about 400 million dollars during the next 12 months. CNN informs that about 20,000 units of Starlink satellite communications have been transferred to Ukraine to the date. Earlier, Musk wrote on Twitter that the operation cost SpaceX $80 million and will exceed $100 million by the end of the year. If you like what we do and would like to tip us, you can now do so directly to our PayPal. Check out the link in the description to this episode for more details. And as usual, you can subscribe to our Patreon. In gratitude for your help, we will give you access to a series of exclusive episodes on wartime life in Ukraine. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.